Good morning. Good welcome. Morning. Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church worship service for the fourth Sunday of Easter. In our prayers this weekend, we pray for all those who are afflicted with the coronavirus and those who are caring for them. For Christy Gottberg, who is dismissed from the hospital after an overnight stay, Tom Guilford, who has been dismissed from the hospital and has started chemo treatments, we pray again for Wayne Wolf at Gateway Vista, Don Baker and Dick Haas at Old Cheney Rehab, Les Roberts, who is at Tabitha with a wound infection. We again pray for others who are receiving treatments, including Christine Irvin, Deline Legband, Helene Paris, Nicole Schalberg, for Marion Radford, who is on hospice care. And finally, we include a special petition today for all those who are homebound. We begin our worship with hymn 467, Awake My Heart with Gladness, stanzas one through six.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we were baptized, we died and were buried with Christ. We were baptized so that we might have a new life, as Christ was raised to life by the glory of God the Father. Therefore, let us confess our sins to God, so that freed from sin, we might walk in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Almighty and merciful God, we are dead in trespasses and sin. We have no power to rise. We have offended your majesty and denied your divinity. We have brought death and darkness where you once said, let there be light. We deserve the doom you have decreed. For Jesus' sake, we implore you, forgive our sins, and grant us his gift of life abundant. Let us be raised with Christ. Christ is risen. Risen indeed. Since we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Thus it is written that the Messiah had to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins must be proclaimed in his name. That word is now proclaimed to you. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. We have seen the Lord. Alleluia. Lord be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is from the second chapter of Acts. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistles from the second chapter of First Peter. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin you are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you have been... For to you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Good morning. Good morning to my friends on the ground here on the carpet. 
Good morning to all of you. Children, a special good morning to you. This morning, we're going to talk about our names. Our names are really important. And sometimes we don't always hear when our name is being called. Think of the places where your name is called. Maybe at school. Maybe at when you're waiting to go to the doctor. When you're waiting your turn, your name gets called. It's good to hear our name. We like to hear our name. Even here when we're at church, we like to hear our name. We want people to know who we are. I like to call you by name when you're up here. When we're up here together, I like to say your name when you want to answer a question. It's very important. You know what? In our gospel message that Pastor Dietrich just got finished reading, uh, he talked about Jesus. Jesus being the good shepherd. Us being the sheep. It's rather easy for us to imagine us being sheep. Just think of us as we're gathered together. And then all of a sudden, somebody runs off. A shepherd is somebody that goes after and brings the person back over and over again. By whatever means necessary. Now you might wonder, I'm not a sheep. You're not. You're children. And that's okay. But sometimes children of God run off. And God uses whatever he can to bring them back. He used his son, Jesus. We just celebrated Easter four weeks ago. And you know what? It was the reason we had Easter was to bring us back. Save us from sin. Keep us right with God. What's great about my friends below is that they're looking right at me and they're listening intently. But nobody's raising their hands. They don't have names. And yet they're listening. And I'm waiting for them to run off so I can run after them. But that's not going to ha happen. But just think about it. When we are together and you hear your name, and I, have, I brought over my attendance book for Sunday school because I don't want to forget anybody's name. So this morning, as I think about names, I think about Ben Dack, Joella Raby, James Beck, Kerrigan Conway. Did you notice I'm saying last names? Because sometimes we hear our first name and we don't get it. We miss out. We don't listen. But when our first and last name is said together, we know exactly who they're talking to or who they're talking about. Or Luke Dietrich, or Jaden Green, or Mira Guess, or Henry Huff, or Kayla Jones, or Evan Kirkman, or Wyatt Schmidt, or Harrison, er or Caroline Barda. All of you matter in God's kingdom. And as sheep, you run away, or you say, I don't want to go to Sunday school today, and your parents gather you around, help you get dressed, feed you breakfast, and bring you. That's exactly what Jesus does for us. He goes and gets us and brings us here so that we can hear the good news that we are special. We are marked. And we talked about this last week, how we're marked by baptism, and we also talk about how important it is for us to hear that good news that we do belong, even when we fall away, even when it's been several weeks. Now it's been several weeks that we've been doing this, and we're doing this for the exact same reason that Jesus talks about being the good shepherds. You have shepherds on earth. You have two pastors here at this church. They make calls. They go after the people that belong here to make sure they're knowing that Jesus loves them. The same thing happens to you, children. This is a good thing. This story, this parable that Jesus shares in Scripture is for us to remember who we belong to 
And even when we run away, he made the sacrifice. He did it for you and for I. And I hope that that makes you feel special. Even when things are getting a little tough, we're ready to get out of our houses and we know it's not safe yet, we have to listen to those that are in authority. And I hope that you think of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, as a loving authority that brings us back together one by one. Think about it. If we had a sheep that ran that way, one of you, one of us would go chase it and bring it back with a bunch. And you did it again, and we'd go after it again. That's our good shepherd. That's who we are as Christians. That's why it's so important to hear what God has to say through his word at worship at Sunday school, you are important. You have been marked. Make sure that you remember that. Don't forget, because even when you do forget, the Good Shepherd's coming to bring you back, to fold you into his arms and love you and care for you. As you go out this next week, I hope that you look in the mirror and you think, I am loved, I am forgiven, and I am cared for. Let's say that together. I am loved, I am forgiven, I am cared for. That's pretty neat. I hope that you can share that with somebody, even if it is in your own house, that they are loved, that they are forgiven, and they are cared for. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for loving me enough to send a shepherd like Jesus, my Savior. Help me to remember how much he loves me, how much he cares for me. Help me to remember how special I am. And we ask this in his name. Amen. Children, oh, the congregation will continue with the next hymn, hymn 709, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
The word of God for our consideration today is John chapter 10, verse 11. This verse is printed on page 8 of the bulletin. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the text. In the name of Jesus, dear friends, in Christ. A pastor was sitting at his desk in his office when he heard a knock at the door. He got up, went to the door, and opened it. And there he saw a young man with an unshaven face, worn clothes, carrying a backpack. What can I do for you? the pastor asked. The young man replied, Could I come inside your church and look around? The pastor said, I would be glad to show you around. So the pastor brought the stranger in, took him to the sanctuary, and started to give him a tour. As the two walked around looking at various things, the young man told the pastor that he was not a member of any congregation. In fact, it had been a long, long time since he had even been in a church. He gotten into the habit of thinking church was just for old people and sick people. Are you sick? said the pastor. No, I'm not sick, said the young man, but truth be told, things haven't been going so well for me lately. I've had several relationships in the past. I just broke up with my girlfriend. I don't really have steady work. I don't have any friends. It was at this point in their tour that the two men came to a huge window, a stained glass window, in the side of the church. It was a window featuring a man who was standing among some sheep. The man was also holding a lamb in his arm. Pointing to the window, the pastor said, this is a representation of Jesus, our good shepherd. And immediately the stranger responded by saying, what's so good about Jesus? Why is he called the good shepherd. At first, the pastor thought he was making some kind of critical or cutting remark about Christ. But as the pastor studied the young man's face, he realized there was no guile in the man's questions. He was simply asking sincere questions, questions that indicated he was searching for help. And so the pastor sat down with the young man and started to talk to him about Jesus. How would you answer the questions, what's so good about Jesus? Why is he the good shepherd? You have heard Jesus called the good shepherd many, many times throughout your life. You have often seen representations of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, either through stained glass or through a picture like the one that's on the bulletin for today. You probably have confessed on more than one occasion words from Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So how would you answer the questions? What's so good about Jesus? Why is he called the Good Shepherd? On the basis of Holy Scripture, we can say that Jesus' goodness was not really connected to his outward appearance. It wasn't associated with any earthly accomplishments, and it wasn't tied to any earthly wealth. His goodness was and is evident in different ways. It was evident in the way he used his power. Though Jesus never held an elected office, though he wasn't a military leader, he did have a kind of power, a divine power. And he used his power to help people, to make the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, even to bring the dead back to life. It was a power he used to help people and show them that God was in him and that he, Jesus, was the Son 
of God. The goodness of Jesus was also evident in the way he talked to people. Jesus was the type of person that people could listen to for hours, and in part that was because he spoke with authority. No one could say the things Jesus said unless God was speaking through Jesus. The goodness of Jesus was evident in the way he handled people. People don't like to be pushed around or used or ridiculed or made to feel inferior or dumb. But so often it seems as if that's what happens. So often it seems as if someone is taking advantage of someone else. So often it seems as if people laugh behind the backs of others or say nasty things about them, especially when those others are not present to defend themselves. But Jesus was different. He was nice to people, except maybe to those who needed to be told off. Instead of pushing people around, instead of pressuring them, he invited them to follow him as he showed them the way of life. And he had so much patience with those who struggled to keep up with him as he went on his way. For example, remember a man by the name of Simon Peter. He followed Jesus for three years he loved Jesus and did things for Jesus. He let Jesus stay at his house whenever Jesus wanted to. And Jesus was kind to Simon Peter. He even gave him a great nickname. He called him The Rock. I suppose you might say Jesus and Simon were tight. But Simon Peter wasn't always good. Sometimes he said the wrong things or did the wrong things. However, Jesus patiently pulled him out of trouble and set him straight. Even when Simon lied and claimed he didn't know Jesus at a very critical time, a time when Jesus was being tried for treason and needed all the friends he could get, and yet Jesus didn't reject him. Later on, when it was all over and Jesus had risen from the grave, Jesus reassured Simon Peter that he still considered Peter to be one of his disciples and wanted Peter to take care of his lambs and sheep. Indeed, an example of how Jesus exercised care in handling people. And Jesus loved all his disciples, and they loved him. Sometimes he got angry with the disciples, like when they wanted to keep children from coming to Jesus, thinking children would be a bother to him. And so Jesus had to tell the disciples that children belong to him, just as adults do. But in and through it all, Jesus treated his followers with care. And then there was the way Jesus died. Jesus died by crucifixion, a form of execution that was usually reserved for convicted criminals. But it wasn't necessary for Jesus to die. He wasn't guilty of anything. The charges brought against him were bogus. Even Pontius Pilate said he couldn't find any fault with Jesus. And yet Jesus willingly suffered mistreatment and allowed himself to be put to death on the cross. He, the good shepherd, deliberately laid down his life, something he predicted when he said the words of our text, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Why did he do this? He did it out of love. He did it for the sake of others, including us. On account of our sin, the ways we fail God, we should suffer. We should be punished unto eternal death. But he willingly endured it all so that we 
might be spared the punishment for our sins so that we might be saved. That's what's good about Jesus. He died for sinners, including us, and now anyone who is sorry for his sins and believes in Jesus, he is forgiven and has life and salvation. Jesus was and is concerned about people. He wants all to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. It doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, liked or disliked. It doesn't matter what part of town you come from or what you look like. Jesus loves all and bids one and all to renounce sin and follow him. And following him has rewards, eternal rewards. As the Holy Spirit leads us to confess our sins and embrace Jesus in faith, he also grants us the assurance that even though we die, yet we shall live eternally in heaven. How can this be? It's because Jesus not only suffered and died, he rose again from the dead. His victory over death and the grave means victory for all who believe in him and follow him. Indeed, the goodness of Jesus is also seen in his resurrection from the dead. Jesus, the shepherd, is good. If someone should ask you why, you can give them an answer. You can share the reason for the hope we have within us. Such a thing is pleasing to the Lord, for he loves one and all and wants all who are lost to be part of his fold. Our prayer are these words from the hymn. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need your tender care. In your pleasant pastures feed us, for our use your fold prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have bought us, we are yours. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. We continue our worship with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Blessed Shepherd, you established your church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty shepherd, grant to us good government and good leaders who will honor your purpose, protect your people, serve the cause of justice, and defend our liberty against all threats. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Shepherd, your voice calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind. We pray especially for Christy, Tom, Don, Dick, Les, Wayne, 
Christine, Deline, Helene, Nicole, Marion, and all those we name in our hearts. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and the hope of new and everlasting life to come. Be also with the unemployed and the distraught. Return to them health and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever-present shepherd, we pray for all those of our congregation who are homebound, separated from their family and friends. We are so thankful that you are with them, helping them not to feel alone in time of isolation. As they turn on the lamp of your word, encourage them by the fact that your grace is sufficient for them and your power is made perfect in weakness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giving shepherd, you have not withheld anything from us, but emptied yourself fully upon the cross, that we might be saved. Move our hearts to such devotion, and teach us such generosity, that we may bring to you the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart, and serve our neighbor in need with resources you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We continue our worship with the hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father, number 725. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.